Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 13. Lucky number 13 of the Gretsch Afternoon Drum Break. I am your host, Neil LaFortune, coming to you all the way from Aurelia, Ontario, Canada. And it is a gorgeous summer day. Again, absolutely beautiful day. Before I bring my guest on, and I am so excited to be talking to the incredible Sean Horton. I do a, uh, a little thing every week where I talk about what it is that I love about Gretsch drums. And today, I thought about this one, and what I love about Gretsch drums is the variety of the backgrounds of each of the artists that I talk to, and the application of the different styles of music that they play, and that they meet their musical goals playing these incredible iconic drums. So today, all the way from Los Angeles, California, he's been up since 5 a.m. I am going to see, I am going to add him on here. I'm here. This fellow grew up in Rochester, New York, began playing in the church at a young age under the tutelage of his father, who is a church organist. He attended LACM on a full scholarship and has played with many artists. I was blown away by this. Macy Gray, Natasha Bedingfield, uh, Israel Houghton, Colby Collet, Jessica Simpson, Tony Braxton. And now you're here on the Crutch Afternoon Drum Break. This is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you, Sean Horton, for being here. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. So do I call you by your tag name or can I just call you Neil? Neil's good. Neil's just fine. He's Neil. Drummer. Drummer Neil is dope, too. As you know, the drum Neil. Drum no, Neil. I love it, man. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll get cooler after talking to you after for the man, hour, man. Please. Hopefully, I'll get cooler after talking to you. There we go. <laughs> so, you've been up since 5 a.m.? Yes. Yes. I, yes. My, yes. It's, we're in COVID right now, and my body doesn't know it. Um, and so, it's doing things that it wants to do. So, you know... Just up. Uh, and what are you doing? Like you're doing, you were you were saying you were editing some drums, were you? Yeah, I'm actually I'm in the process of not right now specifically. I was just actually looking at a song I'm working on right now. I'm working on my project right now. I'm editing, trying to figure out things to take out and and put in and such. Trying to be productive is what I'm essentially trying to do. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it took a little bit of time for you to 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 get in the headspace of being at home and not out playing and figuring out how to be productive? Not really, because my, like, I, how can I say this? Well, when the quarantine started, I, I was literally just finishing up a tour um, with Raphael Sadiq. And as met, no, not a, I, the week before I was finishing up a tour with Raphael Sadiq. And then the next week I had a gig with in DC, with this artist, another artist that I work with named Alice, Alice Smith. And as soon as I got back, it was like, you know, we're quarantined. We got to stay home. So it was like, uh, all right, I'll go to my studio. But when I got to my studio that day, I saw the sign on, on the door saying, like, you know, we've been, you know, we're quarantined and safer at home. And I didn't know whether or not it was okay for us to go in or not because I was the only car there at the moment. Mm. And so, yeah, it was like... <laughs> I did one of these moves, and I was like, <laughs> tapped in the code, and just like walked in, and, and, and it was cool. And by the time I say by midday, I say I probably got there around ten. By one, I walked outside, a bunch of cars there. So I was like, all right, cool. So I can be here at least. I can still practice and make music, and still practice and make music by myself. Which is okay, but it's not the funnest thing. That's not why I got into this. Yeah, I, I hear you. I'm certainly miss traveling and playing, and and Man. we all are. You know what I mean? But we're, yeah. So we're healthy, and so we're. Yeah. I just got into the recording thing a couple of months ago, and nice. It's really, a trip for me to figure out. What you know, all of it, you know, man, you've been doing this a, a long time. So, but but Man. I've always wanted to dive in, but never had the time. Yeah. No excuse, man. So this is good. Now's the time to do it. I mean, listen, man. I figure like the uh, big. I've, I've been on here fifteen years now, and the one thing I realize is that I need a place to play to practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need a place to practice. All right, cool. You got that. What's next? 
well, I play piano too. I play keys and I play, you know, other instruments, not as well as the keys. This is like my second instrument because my dad is an organist. Yep. But so I, I like to make tracks and I, you know, stem like, you know, uh, programming and stuff of that nature. So at least, you know, at the very least, while I'm practicing, maybe I can walk out of this practice uh, with something that I can actually go home and work on. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what it that's what it was in the beginning. It was like I want to go practice, and then maybe I can go home and work on something that I practice or whatever, and maybe put a track to it or whatever. And Neat. literally five years, five years. Sorry about that. Uh, there we no go. No telemarketers. We don't. No, we don't. We, we're not. We're not buying. We're not buying. And, and, yeah, it's funny <laughs> that all kicked in a couple of weeks ago once things were uh, opening up a little bit here all of a sudden we started getting calls yeah the things and we've been you know we're supposed to be going to jail because we haven't paid our taxes and mm, right much. anyway yes i wanted to, to i wanted to, to go right back to the beginning so you were really young and you were playing in the church what was that like how old were you and, and let, let's talk about that uh two what two as far as i remember like seriously um my dad is an organist. My mom sang in the choir. You know what I mean? And, like, we went to this church called Powerhouse Church of God in Christ in Rochester and upstate New York and even in a lot of other different cities, I would, I would say. But, like, from my experience, we it, it was the choir culture. You know what I mean? And which church had the dopest bands. It wasn't necessarily that, but it was, like, the underlying kind of, like, oh, that church is great. The pastor's awesome. But the choir's killing and the drummer's dope and... You know what I mean? Like, you know, so our church, we had we had the premier musicians. Wow. You know what I mean? My dad, like, you know, this is no ego. This is not at all. Like my dad was the man is, you know what I mean? He's still they call him the maestro. You know what I mean? And wow. And he really he earned that name. You know what I mean? He really, really earned that name. He he had my man Barry Dean on drums was who was his best friend. Uh uh. Another, he had a bass player, which was not common in churches back in those times. Oh, is that right? Not common at all. Drums and organ. Wow, okay. And if we don't even have a drummer, we can still hold the service down with an organist. Yeah. We don't need no music. They'll, they'll start singing that, and then they'll start going off on a tangent. But you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, two. My dad used to let me sit in the organ with him while he was directing a choir from the organ, running rehearsals, or I would be able to sit behind the drummer while he was playing, yeah. or literally the front pew. And if and and I would say in a lot of churches, the front pew was the kids, the the, the future drummers place to be. That's awesome. You know what I mean? So you'll see like during service, you'll see the front row filled with like 10, 11, 12, 15 kids. On the front, what, how many kids can fit that front pew playing air drums? Man, I wish I grew up in, in that <laughs> environment. Do you know Larnell Lewis? Do you know? Him? I know of him. I met him a few times. Great guy. Great guy. He took yeah. lessons at the shop that I taught at for. Yeah. I would see him come in, and of course, he comes from the church, and he was the quietest guy when he would come in for his lessons. Wouldn't say a word. He'd be holding his Elvin Jones snare drum sometimes. And my Amazing. Friends were his teacher, and I'm, they, they look at me and they go, I have no idea what I'm going to show him today. He was 14 or 15. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah. Kidding. He plays like eight hours a day, and he plays bass. He's unreal. And I'm, yeah. Of course. And he's such a great guy, but man, right? Environment. So were you playing drums at two? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, they will sit you on. It's, it's the whole. It's the story. You get, you see, a, you know, little man sitting on your lap, and let him hold the sticks, and you know, you go. And it just so happens, it happened to be like a pair. Of, I won't say the name of the drumstick, but it was some sticks that had some uh, nylon ball tips on it, so it looked even cooler. You know what I mean? So it was like, oh, this is really awesome. Yeah. So they were regal tips. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is funny. You remember JoJo's? Oh, I do, yeah. <laughs> My man. Oh, My man. Yeah. That's crazy. We, oh, yeah, man. Oh, that is awesome. 
Yes, wow, wow. That was the, that was, dude, I can't tell you how many JoJo sticks I came across. Yes, my man Jesse knows. Jesse knows. My, I can't tell you how many JoJo sticks that I came across with black and yellow tapes around it or whatever. You know what I mean? And then to find a fresh pair. Oh, I was, know. That was, un, that man. And so sad if they broke or when they wore down. And oh, man, oh, I know. Yeah. They feel so good. This is good. So Wait, you're in Toronto, right? I am north of Toronto, but yeah. I'm an hour and a half north of Toronto. I'm in like cottage country up here. Mm -hmm. So you uh, you were around when AI was out there? Oh, yeah. Yep. They're originally from, they're from out west, but, uh, well, Ray was, was from Vancouver, Ray Ayotte. Right. And then, uh, but oh, yeah, Ayotte's were, um, yeah, they were killing, man. Yeah, crazy. man. Yeah. We, yeah, we'll definitely get into that because I mean it, it was it, that that was a weird thing for Rochester because like in in the church like if you had some DW drums that was considered graduating and you had money and you were the man kind of vibe you know what yeah. I mean yeah, yeah. but if you had anything other than that it was very very. It was strange. It, you were like on a whole nother plane to me, to me. Rochester is a very, it's jazz, straight up and down jazz. You know what I mean? So you had people like this cat named Rich Thompson who, who played drums for uh, the Count Basie tribute band, right? He was a chairman. I think he probably still is now to this day. He's a chairman of the jazz department, the drum chair, the uh, oh. jazz department at Eastman. I would imagine, I think. I could be wrong. I don't know. But going there and going to places like Java Joe's or seeing those cats play, they always had Gretches. Know. You know what I mean? They always had Gretches. So, I'm sorry, I, not to be jumping around. I just have to get this out before I lose it. Um, my god brother and my brothers used to go to the studio in, in Rochester called Dejalon, where it was... It became famous because this R and B famous R and B group named Jodeci used to go there and record. Okay. Are you hip to Casey and JoJo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the lead singers of Jodeci. Right. Right. Okay. So they used to go and record there, but at that studio they had this USA custom Gretsch kit. Eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen. 22 by 16 inch kick drum, right? With the rim mounts. <laughs> My god brother was able to get that drum set from the studio. I don't know no. how he was able to do it. I don't know. I don't know. But he got that drum set. And it's been in our family for a very long time. And I've always been I've always wanted to get it from him, but he would he's never, never, ever he doesn't even play drums anymore. But he's never coming off of that drum set. You remember that kid, Jesse, don't you? I'm sorry, I got people on here just I'm sorry, he he knows. He confirms it. Yes. But dude, like why red? Yeah. Mm. I know, I know. Yeah. Uh and then uh now, check this out. The thing that kind of got me into Gretsch was because he had that kit, and I knew that all the jazz cats played Gretsch's, and all their kits always sounded good. Always. You know what I mean? Yep. He, he put them things out, and I was like, yo, it, we have a Gretsch drum set in the church, people. Here we go. Just so you guys know, it's, uh, it's an invasion coming, DW. You got you gotta Pearl. You got to take a... Yeah, you got to take a... You gotta, you got to take a back seat right now because these, and then it was like nobody had all of those times. No one had all of those drums. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sorry. I just, I just, I had to get it out because, you know. How old were you when you first saw that kit? Man, I was young. I was really young. I would say, let's say in between eight and 13, I'll go even earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> I would go on even earlier. And, and it, you know, 
and it, it was it was through glimpses. I would see it. I, I would see the drum set set up at his church. And if, if we were to ever get together and shed together or play or practice together, or we call it work out back, at the, back in those times. If yeah. we were to ever get together and work out, it would, be, it would be those drums with a 7x12 Pearl snare drum. Remember those? Oh, I do. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And he had, I mean, dude, he went in. He got all human birds, red cases for him. Dude. I know. I, of that with the die cast hoops and those sizes you know what I mean? like when i first saw gretsch drums i hunted all over toronto to find the drum set that i wanted i had a really terrible stewart set to begin with i couldn't take it after a couple months yeah i i decided okay i was nine almost 19 years old i was 19 i'm like okay i need it i need a drum set i have no idea went to every shop and i whacked this this eight and the ten of this USA custom kit yeah, in a cymbal testing room in Toronto at Toronto Percussion, which is no longer, and they, the place was, was going out of business in. And I'm like, that's the sound that yeah. I heard. I've never seen die cast hoops. I'd heard of Gretsch drums. I knew who Tony Williams was. Yeah. I knew who these guys were, but I didn't know. I'd never played them. As soon as I played them, I'm like, everything else went, okay, I want this. Yeah. yeah. thousand bucks with an 18 inch bass drum. And a third what? It's well, I'm old, man. That was 1986, so long time ago. You're so, winning. 1986? No yeah. way. Yeah, 1986, oh, 53. So I, I, don't, that's man, I don't understand, man. Like, the, it, it just has so much strength. The, the drums, they, they, to me, they have a lot of strength, and with, especially with the die cast. Once I got hip to die cast poops and understand what they do to the drums, it made all the more sense in the world, and it to, to me, like, why I love Gretsch so much, because how can you be so strong but still deliver such a buttery sound? It's exactly it. It's exactly you know what I mean? Yeah. That's wild to me. You know, and, and, and Vinny, Vinny's sound, Vinny, like, Vinny and Tony, to me, well, okay. I only say Vinny now because, like, his tones are really like they're they're just man they're effortless to me they're like really they're every time they just sound great even his snare drum like his yeah. sound just is it's it's to me it's like that's what that that's the goal that's what you should want your drums to sound like if you're playing grass drums get it to if you can get it close to that you're you're on the way your drums sound great already but if you can yeah. get it somewhere near that you're in, you're in the ballpark. You're fine. You're fine. You know what I mean? I do. It's, it's no wonder he was a closet Gretsch guy when he was playing Grand Y for many years. and then Come like, on with the history. Let's go. It's true, right? Like a lot of what? those sessions when you see him cutting some, um, Sting's um, Seven Sumner's Tales. Yeah. Studio. And he's got that square badge Gretsch kit. Yeah. And a Supra. <laughs> But he was a Yamaha guy, but playing this Gretsch kit in the studio, and same with right. Jeff Beccaro playing. Right. Come on, man. Talk about it. You know. You know. And you see him with the with the, the Carpathian Elm kit. And, oh, it's well known, man, that, that they were playing those. And even Chad Smith cutting uh, some Chili Peppers stuff. You know, he would talk about it at clinics when he would talk about it, and he would move the mic away when he would say Gretsch. So yeah. he filled me a kit that was... Uh, and it wasn't as good as the Gretsch kit. So anyway, but I love the history of the brand. I love how old. Yeah. And, and, and oh, man, but that sound is timely. Have you been to the factory? Not yet. You got to go. Not yet. I'm going to go. I'm going once, once, uh, once this COVID thing starts, you know, starts letting up. And once we start getting back, hitting the road again, that'll be amazing. My mom, my mom is actually, my mom and my sister are moving. Uh, my mom is in North Carolina right now. My sister is actually moving to North Carolina soon. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to make that trip. It's going to be a very intentional trip. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. It, very it, intentional it, trip. It's in like an unassuming, well, now they've got the mural painted on the outside. But when I was there a couple of years ago, there was the little door and my GPS said, you've arrived. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Uh, the, is, that, is that Gretsch the door there? Is that... <laughs> and, it's, and it says it just had Gretsch above this white door. And it's so wow. Cool. 
but my face hurt from the from just smiling the whole time. Come oh, on, man. The, they've got the three shells the, side by side, the USA yeah. and the broadcaster, and he explained, oh, man, you got to go. It's, I'm going to. And it smells so good. You smell nit nitrocellulose locker, and, and oh, and it's it's really great. Yeah, man, yeah. that's so awesome. You're gonna need to film that, man. So oh, you know I am. I, I'm definitely. I, I'm all about the blogs. That's happening. They're really that's, good, by yeah. the way. I really enjoyed. Oh wow! Bless you, man. Like like the whole way through, I'm like, wow, this is seven minutes. This is gonna be good. Wow. And, uh, from the <clears throat> and I love the camera angles too, underneath the crash symbol and. Hey, listen, anything to be discreet, and yeah. yet still be able to watch tape. That's the only reason why I do that. To be honest with you, it's not for the gram. It's never been for the gram. You know what I mean? It's never been for Instagram. I just feel like it's I. I you know I'm I play sports i'm an athlete as well you know what i mean like i play basketball and i play football and i ran track and like you know i've had my coaches tell me like you know you got to watch tape we got to go watch tape stuff like that you know what i mean so we can watch what we're doing and i even had a musician another musician that i play with sometimes uh my man told me it was like yo have you ever listened to yourself recorded yourself play before it's like yo you should do that listen to yourself record yourself watch tape and it was like oh how else do I get better unless I know what I'm doing and where I'm going wrong? You know what I mean? And then, you know, yeah, I mean, it's more so to watch tape. I want to get better at what I'm doing, so I have to watch what I'm doing and see where I'm falling short and and trying to figure out, oh, that was a clunker. How can I, you know, how can I tighten that back up or whatever? You know what I mean? It's more, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, uh, what can I say? What is it called? It's like, I'm, you know, I'm analyzing myself. You know, That's the best way video. I remember videoing early on, and it was I was horrified. I'm like, mm. man, I thought yeah. this was happening, but yeah. it wasn't happening. It was yeah. it was awful, but yeah. it was a good experience, man. And it's it, if you've got a fragile ego, listen, knock that out. Just ooh. I, and I do it for that reason too. Ooh, dude, I love, I enjoy. I oh no, oh Sean, what are you doing? No, oh. All that, yeah, it's yeah. You thought you had an ego? Nope, not anymore. No, no, yeah, no, you don't. Hey, Sean, you suck. Ah, yes, you do. You suck bad. Practice for a short moment. Well, yeah. I had a lesson with Weckle um, maybe three weeks ago, and he said to put uh, a mirror beside so I could analyze because he he had me move the drum kit around and whatnot. Yeah. Like I don't know why I got away from that, and I'm glad mm. that I, I have it up in my practice sessions, and I'm watching. Man, that is gold. And of course, I yeah. do on the road. Yeah, because like you're, you're correcting yourself in real time with the mirror. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly it. This is good. So, <laughs> on, so when you were young and you were playing in church, playing with your dad, how did that progress into you wanting to do this for a living? Ah oh, man, how can I? How, I'm gonna try to explain this. It's short. I'll try to make this minuscule. Um, so imagine, as a kid, all I want to do is play in church, right? And 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 our churches that we grew up in is like you know we like they would let us play a congregational song. You know what I mean? So like that like so the congregation would start saying, "This is a church of God in Christ," and then music should start walking in like, of course. Um, this is the organ starts playing, and then the, you know somebody will call you up like, "Come play," because the drummer hasn't showed up yet. All right, cool. So I get there now. I'm playing. So it goes from me wanting to play that one song to now me wanting to play the service, right? Knowing that I can actually play this one song and hold this one song down, maybe. Not even just the service. Maybe I can play a choir song, which is a special. Okay. Going from that to being like, okay, maybe I can play a service. Going from that to maybe I can play a midnight musical, which was like, that was like, yo, it's a, it's a concert at your church with community, other community choirs, ensembles, groups, other musicians from different areas of Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, killers coming to your church to play from 11 to two o'clock in the morning wow 
and it's nothing but music. No preaching, music, 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 just bangers, left, bong, bong, just catch, just getting up and killing. Maybe I can play that night. Right? So if you so really that that cycle was that was it for me essentially because really I didn't know that I can actually be a professional musician. I didn't know that I can actually do this job and do this career professionally until my second year of playing with Macy. What? Wow, okay. Yeah, you, you wanna know what else is funny? Tell me. I didn't know that this was a thing. No. I didn't know that this was this was an actual legitimate career. Right. I wasn't aware. I was, you know, not dude, straight church. Like I got into jazz because of a drummer that I love named Doobie Powell and his finesse and how he played and how he approached the music. But he was playing gospel though. But he was also in the jazz and stuff. But through him, it got like once I started, you know, in high school, mind you, we had a I'm not gonna cuss, we had a really bad music program in high school. It, it's bad. Like a lot of those movies that you see, like, you know, Sister Act, that yeah. kind of vibe. That's that was us. That was really us. Without the whole the competitions and stuff like that. We we did our best. We had a few, right? So <laughs> So like me going to like a school or a college for jazz or anything of like anything like that, it, you know, like a university, I got rejected twice from the same school. Once in high school and once as I tried to reapply in, in community college. Twice. You know what wow. I mean? Sight reading was trash. I, you know, but what you going to do? You know what I mean? Like you don't have money to actually pay for lessons. You know what I mean? The school doesn't have it. We don't have sight. We don't. We, our music program was bad, dude. I mean, you know, but you know. So, uh, where was I going? Um. So you didn't know that this was. I wasn't aware, man. I, I just, I just, it was just something that I did every, every day, every Sunday, every. It was just in my family. My dad played professionally. I just found out that he played with somebody that had a hit. And I, you know, I still have to have a conversation with him about that because that's something that he left out. And I'm upset about that. <laughs> um, it's, it's seriously, it's like, it, it can be like pulling teeth out with him about talking about music with him. You know what I mean? Like, dad, what were you listening to? I don't know, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, I didn't know that this was a thing. I didn't know that you can get a pension. I didn't know that, you know, I... I, I, did, I had no idea, man. I had no idea. So, like, you know, learning all the things that I know now, like, it, you know, it took me a minute to actually, like, really grasp some of the etiquette things or some of the, you know, the things, man, I, well, Macy, everybody was older than me. I was the youngest one. <clears throat> and they... Whoop my tail. They did. Yeah. They gave me the business, and I appreciate every single bit of it. Like, like thank God I didn't get in get in too early with young people. Oh man. And yeah. this is no knock. This is no knock. No knock at all. No knock at all. But the information that I got from these OGs, and I mean like you know, like everybody on there, they play with Macy at her height. The height, I'm talking about the I tries. You know what I mean? And like, I'm coming after people like, you know, Bucket or Victor and Drizzo. Wow. Immediately after. Victor wow. and Drizzo, Bucket, Sean. So Victor is still in the picture. As, like, why don't you play it like Victor? <laughs> That's and, crazy. You know what I mean? And then, you know, not to mention, like, my mentor, the guy that got me out here in the first place, Mike Shapiro, like, all yeah. these cats is looking at him like, yo, you're Zeus. Victor and Drizzle is like, yo, that's Mike Shapiro. 
it's Mike. Like the cats that I'm looking up to, like, yo, my gosh, thick, yo, you the man. These cats like Mike's the yep. man. I'm like, I'm in good hands. I'm all right, cool. You know what I mean? So like yeah, it, it was a quite a learning experience and a eye opening experience for me. And how Huge. old were you? How old were you then? Twenty three, twenty two, twenty three. I'm thirty seven now. How old are you? Thirty seven. Thirty seven. I was trying to guess. No, ah. no I'm like going. <laughs> You're kind. I, 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 <laughs> no, it's true. What were they riding your tail about? Man, what, dude? Being on time. One. Yeah. Being on time, knowing the music, um, not playing too much, grooving, like you know, I was coming in. Hot. I was really coming in hot. Like I was coming in like guns are blazing. Like, hey, you know, I just cared so much about the gig, and I cared so much about keeping the gig. I cared so much about doing a good job on the gig. I cared so much about sounding so good on the gig. All these things are good and well. They're cool, a little ego driven, right? Yeah, You know what I mean? It's too much me in the situation. And it was. And now that I get it now, man, like, yeah, it was completely too much me in the situation. And they were asking me to just play the music, which is right. really easy. Now, did you understand that when they said that to you? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm playing the music. What am I not playing? I'm playing. Oh, right. Come on, man. Would you groove some more? What? I'm playing the pocket. Well, you're not grooving. What's the difference? I didn't know that. The difference between playing a pocket and grooving. Ugh, it's enough to, like, make you just cringe out of your skin. It's, it's two, two, two different things. And once I came to realize that, it was like, man, I wish I would have known this a long time ago, but I was too rambunctious. I was too like, oh, let's go, you know, you know what I mean? Versus like just being coming from a quiet place, like, you know what I mean? Real, just, just real keltner -ish. like real, you know what I mean? Like just a soft, quiet, subtle place giving myself more room to actually like get big in places that they need me to get big in. <clears throat> That's great advice. And uh, all of this for, for drummers that were your age and, and younger, and maybe even some guys that don't get it and girls that don't get it. When yeah. They go, why am I not playing those better gigs? You know, maybe that's why play the music. Man, right? Man how long, it's how long did you play with Macy? <laughs> 2000, maybe like late two. Ah, what was kind of off and on? Because I, I, 2006, 2000, late 2005, 2006, on up to 2008 is when I left Macy and I went to play with Natasha. Wow. Okay. How did yeah. you get? Can we, can we, can we say? Yeah. That? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, uh, Keith Harris, are you hip to him? Yes. Of course you are. He's the man, right. Keith called me uh, because she was holding auditions. And he was like, yo, you know, I'm going to have Georgie, her manager, could give you a shout. You know, if you ain't got nothing going on right now, for sure. And the, that connection came because Macy was signed to Will I Am's label at the time. Okay. And so... I think Keith was working with her as well, and they would they would come to our rehearsals sometimes, whatever. And so, yeah, that's how we got connected. And then also, like you know, I I I think Mike had something to do with it too because he was also working on her record as well. And Mike was working with my MD at the time, uh, uh, Cassandra O'Neill. And so he probably put her, put like you know put me in her ear, or whatever. Yep. He's everywhere. This guy, Mike, he really, really is. I'm very sure he's probably listening to this somewhere. I don't know. Um, but uh, what was I saying? 
So you were playing, and so how you ended up getting the gig with Natasha? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he called me. Uh, Keith called me. He was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna have Georgie call, give you a shout if you ain't have, if you don't have anything going on. I haven't given you a shout." And uh, yeah, I, it was for an audition. I thought it was for the gig, but it was like, fine, whatever. I do, I do an audition. I went to audition, and it's pretty much murder. She wrote. Yeah, it was cool. I think my gap helped me out too with that audition. I actually heard a backstory. I'm not even joking. Uh, uh, her my, huh? Let's hear it. <laughs> her monitor engineer was is is a uh, Mags. She's French, and she said <laughs> she told she told me she told Natasha she was like, "Nah, won't you look at the gap on that one?" I was like, "What are you? I've been teased for this all my life. What are you doing?" But it turns out that it's a sign of royalty, like in France. It's like, like to have like people will put pennies in between kid their kids' teeth just so they have a gap. No. Yeah, it's crazy. It's cultural. It's amazing. All the stuff I learned on the Gretsch afternoon drum break. This is crazy. Come on, Gretsch. History. Dag nabbit. How long did you with Natasha? Where did you Where did you play with her? Where did you tour? U.S. All over the world. Where did all you go? All over the world. All over. We did a we did a lot of U.S. tours. I can't say we went over the world. I'll take that back. No, I'll take that right back. We only went to London. I think Canada, wow. the States, uh, London. I can't think of any other places we went outside of London. I can't because we. She yeah she didn't do much out of the states and I think about it right I first heard of her through the duet that she did with the Rascal Flats guys whoa and yeah she ever sing and of course that's when I was aware of her and and yeah uh, amazing so you played with her for a, a tour or how uh, long were you with her? Oof, that was a while with her I played a long time with her that was a good run uh 2008 to maybe 2000. Thirteen, maybe. Yep. Thirteen, two thousand twelve, maybe. Because I think two thousand thirteen, I was out with. Uh, I was doing something. Ah, man, I it's, I can't remember the dates right now. I know I left Natasha to go play with Kobe Calais. Ah, wow. And that was for a short period of time. That mm -hmm. was rough. That that was it. Was a good gig. It was a good gig. It just ended yep. up tough. Like, it was like one of those, like, it's one of those learning moments. Yeah. One of those. Definitely one of those learning experiences where, you know, you you get the dates for, you, you do the gigs, you get the dates, and this is three months or something like that of doing gigs with this person, <laughs> and get the dates for up upcoming tour, then all of a sudden, yeah, we need you guys to audition again. And mind you, it okay. You would understand. You would get. You would understand. You would get it. So, I'm the youngest one on 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 the gig. I'm the young. I'm the young buck, right? But then you also have like people that you have two cats that played with. You have one cat that played on Lion King and that's played with like, you know, a slew of artists. You have another guy that's played with Chris Cornell. Wow. And like, you know what I mean? Like, you got killers. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm walking around like, sir. Hi. Right. So it's a pleasure to play. Hi. My man, you need something? You need something? I'm, you know <laughs> what I mean? I'm not brown nosing, but I'm respecting who I'm around because I know I'm around some credible cats, right? Yeah, no. She's like, no, yeah, yeah. We need you all to audition. I mean, like, we got cats that play for Barry Manilow. I'm like, hmm? This is Barry Manilow. You, you want this guy to audition again after what we've done for this past three months? And you still... Hmm. What was up with that? I don't know, but I know this. Stay positive. Yeah. This is what I'll take away from that. Always stay positive. Don't be caught saying some dark stuff out of your yeah. mouth around no one. Yeah, very, very good advice, 100%.
don't do it to yourself because sure enough, somebody will pick it up and be like, they'll they'll pick it up and twist it up and just be like, oh my gosh, this person is really dark. They're really negative about this experience. Yeah, and that bad news travels fast, right? The, the Way bad. fast. Like, I mean, and that yeah. will affect gig down the road. And it's bad. It's just a bad vibe around you. Yeah. Right. And you're wise for 37, man. You're you know? kind. <laughs> I'm still it's learning. So it's true. Yeah. There's a common thread that I've, I've noticed with all of the 13 guests so far. Nice. Why drummers and musicians are successful. And, there's so, and I love this. Perhaps this was a bit of a selfish thing for me to want to interview everybody is to figure out what the common threads of success are. And it's mm. the very things that you're talking about. Wow. This, is, this is gold, man. And I'm Bless telling you, you man. Thank you for gold. having me. Yeah, and, seriously. And Lucas Von Gretsch, I want to thank Lucas. He said, man, you're going to love Sean. He goes, he's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody he has referred me to has been just absolutely really great. And, and I know oh, we know each other from a hole in the ground, but man, um, I appreciate you, you spending the time here. Let's go a little bit further. So yeah, yeah. After after Colby, where did you play? Who did you play with? What did you do? Oh man, listen. Uh, I think after Colby was what? How about to say? Where is my phone? And it's right here. Um, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna look at the resume just for a moment. I think. Or am I? <laughs> I think after that came uh, Christian Castro, maybe. Aladdin pop artist, it's funny. He's yeah. like, he's yeah. like, uh, you know, you know, Christian. Oh, uh, you know what? It was a, it was some on one of your feeds. I think um, maybe your IG. Mm -hmm. it was one, probably maybe one of those. I think so. That's cool. Yeah, it was a good experience. Definitely different. I traveled. We did a lot of traveling in South America with him. That was awesome. And man, ah. Oh. <sighs> If I can go back in time just to talk to little Sean, like, listen, man. Yeah. Just chill. Just relax. Just relax. Just enjoy it. Yeah, we traveled all, all yeah, playing Latin pop music. It's fun. It was fun. Different. Way yeah. different. Way different. What was different about it? how they treat their musicians. Okay. Like, and this is all me hearing from like, you know, hearing hearing it from like the texts and like the people that work with other musicians, like other artists like Juanes or like, you know, other big Latin pop artists. And they're saying like, you know, being that we're from LA and we're LA musicians, we get treated better. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, it was cool, but, it, you know, like, <laughs> it, it made me think, like, man, how bad do these guys get treated? Like, I want to know, like, what are, what are their conditions? And, you know, what, like, for instance, like, a, like, our dressing room, or like, one time was outside of the arena, which was like a cockfighting arena, which was an amazing experience, bro. Wow. Talk about walking in and seeing where you're playing and then actually seeing, like, a, a chicken like nail next to like you know what i mean your drum like and you're realizing like where you are like oh oh that's a real thing this is real real i can dig it but like we walk outside the arena and we're in this tent and it's hot and humid like 90s at night and you got the AC blowing, and it's like flies and gnats is coming around. It's cool. I mean, listen, listen. You know, you do what you do. You do what you do. You know what I mean? I've done van tours, too. So it's like I know from the van to the bus. And it's like, you know, it's all living experience. You know? But, yeah, it was, a, it was interesting, man, like in getting paid in cash. Like, yeah, it was... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like here, like playing in front of like cartel bosses and stuff like that, and you don't even know it. 
that guy with the gap. Bring him to me. Bring him to me. Yo, I have so many, so many times, man. My text has told me like, don't, don't look over there. <laughs> it's like you see this dude with like seven girls around him. He's just sitting there by himself, dark sunglasses, and it's night. And we're in a building, and he's wearing sunglasses, and it's like you know. And you're like, don't. And he's like, don't, don't look over there. You don't want him thinking that you're looking at his girls. And I'm like, oh, I know, I know what we're doing. I know, I, I get it. Don't worry about it. I have blinders on. You ain't got to worry about me. Listen, I'll play the drums. That's it. That's so funny. That's it. it having, like, yeah, having bras and panties thrown on your drums. Horrible. That's good muffling, right? <laughs> great muffling. Great muffling. Not too sanitary, especially now and day. Like, it's not the COVID. You don't <laughs> keep your COVID panties and bras to yourself. I don't want it. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> keep that. But, oh, man. but, like, imagine, like, you hear these things, like, you hear these things, and it's kind of like, you, you hear the stories and it's like you don't really believe it until you're actually in it and it's like <clears throat> oh pretty crazy yeah and actually seeing an artist pick up a, something picking up a, a panty and smelling it and throwing it back out into the crowd man listen it was a great experience <laughs> i bet it was hilarious That's it was hilarious funny. One of the things I miss is is traveling to places that I've never been, and I would have would not have been to many places had I not had a gig there. Yeah, man. And I miss that, and the ex just experiencing and experiencing other audiences from other countries. We play the states quite a lot. I play yeah. in an ABBA tribute. And, nice. And it's, and it's and it's great. I love ABBA. We <laughs> awesome. So do I. But Come on. An awful lot, and I tell you, Texas. California loves ABBA. Florida loves ABBA. We're not yeah. going there. So things right now, but I, I, a little dangerous down there. A little dangerous. It's a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about this bell brass snare drum that I saw you, and of course I had to use that in a little promo clip. But man, that is. And what is? Is that a swamp dog that you had? Yeah. Fill me in on this bell brass. When did this come about? And 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 I want to know. I did a gig, uh, DC. In DC, that's right, with Alice Smith. And the back line they gave me had that bell brass. Really? I said the same thing. I was like, "What?" Like, this thing is heavy. I'm like. Ugh. And I looked and I turned it over and I'm like, solid, just solid brass. I'm like, oh, I tune that bad boy down, get it to where I need it to be. And sure enough, it was popping. And it, and oh. Amazing. Like you, uh, you know, like, come on, man. Listen, my first drum set was at 19. I bought my first drum set with my own money at 19, and it wasn't with the hardware. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, and it, 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 yeah, dude, like a bell brass, like I, no one, and I never would a dream, I never would dream of having anything like that. The only reason why I know about bell brass is because I know other drummers that own them and that, that are like deeper into drums than I have ever been. You know what I mean? Like, they be leech. Prime example. He's like, he, yeah. he has every dog on drum there is for that matter. You know what I mean? Like, I um, I've got this Trixon set here. You know, like, like what? I know, or the George Way that he just exactly. So this dude has all these drums, and I'm like, you know, I I go over there. We probably share some time or whatever, and I'll play whatever he has up, and it's like, golly, man, it feels. It feels amazing. Everything that he had, like, you know, oh, this is a bell brass. Oh, what? Is it a tamil bell brass? Oh, okay. This is what this is. Oh, okay. Oh, this is soft. Oh, 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 oh okay. And then I met Sean Gordon Gretz, and I'm like, oh, we got a bell brass. Yeah, and it's a killer one, too, man. Whoa. Dude, listen, I have a solid steel recommended to me by my man, Andrew Shreves. Bless your heart, yes. sir. Yes. You are amazing. And once I got that first, and he showed me... Ah, he showed. I walked in to go do something for uh, to do a taping for a drum. Uh, uh, the the Catalina, I think it's the SM2 or the S. 
it's like the blue duco uh yes it's yep you know what i'm talking about and yep. i'm sitting in his office and i'm going around testing out the snare drums that he has there and i'm like dude what is this and it's the bell brass and he was like it's like yeah man that's I, I, that's a killer he, he says he calls it killers and yeah I'm like, dude this thing sounds a uh, freaking amazing Never knew that I was going to actually get a chance to actually sit down with it in D.C. to actually get it to where I needed to be. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Like, that time was very special for me. Oh. And matter of fact, my wife was there. I have a picture of myself telling her she was on the balcony. It was 930 close. She was on the balcony. I'm like, babe, babe, you see this? This. I'm getting this. This, this. I'm going. We're going to get. I'm getting this, this baby. <laughs> oh man! Like who? Like you know? Like every every drum, every like top end drum set that I've owned, man, has kind of been like, yo, this is it's golden to me. It's like having like a favorite whoopie. You know what I mean? Because I never had money to actually buy this stuff for myself coming up you know what i mean so like yeah. when i do get a chance to get my hands on it, it's like oh no this is this is a head this is a head i call it i call, I call, I call it a head knocker so once i take this into the studio and take my solid steel and this bell brass next up is the solid aluminum believe it that's beautiful mm, bro those are beautiful head knockers man What's this? What's the scoop? Why do you have that snare drum where the first floor tom normally would be? It makes logical sense. Tell us. Blah, boom, pop, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. Right? Blah, boom, pop, go, boom. Oh, yeah. Versus blah, boom, cap, boom, boom. On the left side, having your snare, having that that side snare over here, you got a whole lot more work to do. I wondered why you did that, and was I showed you the little picture of me setting it up? Setting yeah, seat. that was inspiration for me and the stack. Oh, <laughs> I, I was watching you play, and that your left hand underneath, man, I was playing, and I totally love it. Thank you for that. that is you got great. it, man. But totally. Oh, great now the swamp dog so it didn't look like you had much in the way of muffling on that but i couldn't tell from the video you just, just sit right down big fat snare drum oh okay there you go mm -hmm. and normally i would just put just some dump jump some dots on there or whatever tone it down as low as i possibly can i can get really low with that swamp dog because it's an eight yes right which is why i got it so i can get really low with it right but in most most cases i have to use a seven and a half or a seven by 14, right? So I try to get as low as I can and put some dots on it. I only have that, that big fast snare on it now. Is be, I, have the, I have it on it now, one, because I can get lower. It sounds lower. And it does exactly what I need it to do. And it's just like, it's simple, not a lot of muffling on the drum. It looks clean. Eh, there it is. Sounds so great. And I want to bring that out to, uh, if we ever do an ABBA show soon, and have that be, for some of the bat, for some of the ballad stuff. And maybe my Brooklyn or whatever is the main drum or my or, anyway. Yeah. Great inspiration for me. We Bless have you, man. seven minutes or so, if you believe it or not. Wow. But what do you use to record with? If you're doing tracks at your place that you when you cut drums, what do you have set up? Logic. Okay. Ableton, if I'm I I use Ableton only as a slave for the click. Cause I have, I do a lot of programming in Ableton. So I have like the, the foundations click pack. It's like a MIDI click pack. That's just really stable and solid. So I'll use that while I'm using logic to record. Okay. Yeah. Got some mic pre's, you know, just, nice. you know, try to try to make, you know, some compressors, some DBX compressors. I'm just trying to get like the native sound of my drums. Mm-hmm going into the box versus using the plugins inside the box. Very cool. Very cool. What's in your studio now? The drum, the drum where you have your drum kit. Did that kit. Or what do you have? That's uh that, that, the that's a new classic. Yeah, I thought so. That's yeah. 
sparkle. Bruce, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Lacquer. That's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the difference. It's not a wrap. It's a lacquer. Beautiful. So what are the sizes of that kit? Uh, that is a 10, 12, 14, 16, 22-inch kick drum. Simple. Straight ahead. Right now, I'm just using the 12, 12, 6, 12 14, 16. Yeah. I haven't, I've been, I've been debating putting up a 10 for a while because I haven't used it in a while. And it's kind of like, I just don't, it's, uh, it's, it's no reason. I find it harder to play with a 12 and a 14 than, a, than I do a four, than, than I do with a 10, 12, 14. Why is that? The cross. I see. The crossing and the getting from here to here. If I figure, man, like if I can get from here to here smoothly, Doing it, it, it'll the shape will turn like when I put the other time the tennis time up, the shape will be like this. Oh, right, <clears throat> I'll be able to go anywhere, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, you're very, very fluid watching you play, very nice, and, and you've got such a nice whip snap motion. Oh, which bless you, man! A nice tone. I mm. love, I really enjoy watching. watching wow, bless you, you play, especially from the angle man i can't wait to see you play <laughs> in person if you're in toronto please you gotta let me know you better I, believe i will i want to come and see and, and stuff don't even worry about it. you're on the list i got you what advice would you give a young drummer say maybe 15 16 17 saying sean i want to be a drummer what do i need to do what would play nice mm. play with people Play with other people. You know what I mean? Play with other musicians. Play and not just other drummers. Play with musicians, other musicians. Because if you want to play music, you you know, if you wanna if you wanna do this as a career, you gotta know that you're you're playing music as a you know, for your career. You're playing music, you're not playing your drums. I'm I don't play my drums, I, I use them. When did you that as opposed to being a drummer because so many people are like i play the drums and they really hear the drums when did that was that something that you knew early on no 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 it came to a, a breaking point while i was in school mm. at the la music academy it definitely yeah. came at a breaking point i had a i had a time where i where i was uh we're learning music. We're like, we had a music listening class and, and, I, and I had a breakdown. I was like, yo, we're listening to uh, Ghetto Wonderland by Donny Hathaway and Vill is it Village Ghetto Wonderland? Is that by Donny Hathaway or Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder and then Some Day We'll All Be Free by Donny Hathaway. And Mike was teaching his class. Mike Shapiro was teaching his class. And I had broke down because it was like, it just hit me so hard. They were grooving. You know what I mean? It just sounded so good and so effortless. And it was like, I don't want to taint the music with my ego. Yeah. I didn't play for, i say, about a week or two wow. after that. And I'm going to school. So this is just not, this is all wrong. It's all bad. Trouble. You know, I should be playing, practicing. And I, I didn't have a desire to do so because I, I really wanted to, like, purge myself of ego when it came down to music, because really, man, like, yo, like right now, right now, the real players, and I'm saying this, the real players are hurting the most. Not, no, 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 I mean, not, not, not other people in the world, no, no, no. People that love playing music, people that love playing music, the real players are really, really feeling it because you can't play by yourself and actually get that same feeling that you do when you're playing with other people. You know what I mean? Like, and this is not saying I'm a real player, but I find joy and I find my purpose and my passion when I'm playing with other people on the bandstand. That is beautiful. We have 40 seconds. Okay, want... sorry. <laughs> no, thank you so much for taking the time. I really, really appreciate it. You are man. a beautiful human being, my man. Bless you, man. Thank you for having me. And um, all the best to you. And I'm I'm going to post this. Um, man, I'm overwhelmed by your last little comment there. Wow, bless you, man.
Thank you so much. Oh, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned next week. We have another fantastic guest, but thank you so much to Sean Horton for- Thank you for having me. Bless you. Being thank awesome. you, Neil. Everybody take care. We'll see you soon. Be safe. Wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do